knows how you come across somebody once in a while you, you shouldn't have messed with. That's me. Well, I'm I am not an African American. You're an Oreo cookie. White in the inside and black on the outside. I don't have an Afro. I have an Amerifro. Talking that idiotic stuff you talk about, I will slap you. Go ahead. Make my day. Black at the ace of spades, but 100, 100% American. Heard around the world by everybody and their mama. The Jesse Lee Peterson Radio Show. Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Welcome to the second hour of the show. Kelly is here behind uh, Hollywood Update with Kelly. You're talking about this film, Les Miserables. Is that yes. what you call? Yes. Les Miserables. Uh, so you saw that. I did see it. You said here that it will lift you up. Yes. And you mean like literally from the ground, off the ground? No. It literally and figuratively. <laughs> <laughs> um, you might not think that that a movie that translates to the miserable in English uh-huh. would be uplifting, um, but I found it to be uplifting on multiple levels, um, all of which I'll get to. Yeah. Um, and, you know, most people have probably heard of, of Les Miserables, uh, it's based on a French historical novel written in 1862, actually. Um, and it only became more mainstream in the United States when it was translated into English for a play in um, 1985. And then it was adapted for um, Broadway in 1987. Um, and then just it got huge everywhere. 60 million people have seen the play. Um, wow. Right, yeah. So, you know, it's big, and it's been adapted, actually, to the movie screen before, but <laughs> I'm pretty well convinced that this is the best job that's ever been done. Uh, it came out Christmas Day. Um, this this version's directed by a British uh, director, Tom Hooper, and, um, yeah, it's a great story. Uh, one, one of the things that's that's wonderful about it is it's an overtly Christian movie. It's very it Christian. I'm surprised to hear that. I was asking a friend of mine about it this weekend. Was he going to go see it? Mm-hmm. And he's like, I saw it. He's seen it before, but now it's in music. You know, they sing about it instead That's of right. talking about it, you know. That's right. And he's like, I don't, want, I don't know if I can see someone go. singing. Is, that, is it easy to understand I'm glad even though they're singing that. it instead of speaking that. it? This is, this is one thing I want to address, <laughs> especially with prospective male viewers. My brother was having a hard time, for example, like wanting to go see it. And he hasn't seen it yet. He's going to. I'm right. going to get him to. But, um, you know, he was he- hesitant because, oh, it's a musical. I don't want right. to see a musical. That's that's for the women. Um, <laughs> but honestly, you know, at first you notice you're like, oh, they're all singing. You know, I forgot it was a musical. But um, and yes, all the dialogue is in song. But I have to say at the end of the movie, <laughs> I actually didn't realize that literally every part of the movie was sung. I didn't realize it really? because you get so interested in the story they're telling, in the characters, in the acting, um, that you just you're listening to the words and what's happening in the plot. Um, the other thing about it is it's not the singing is not prettied up. The director made a conscious decision for the actors to sing live. So it wasn't um, pre-recorded and dubbed over and refined. It was like they were saying it in the actual scene live. But that's almost sound as uh, boring to know that it's no. not like, you know, it would be. Up to... It would be if the actors weren't so talented. They have oh, okay. insane acting talent in this movie. R- really good. Hugh Jackman uh, plays the main character, uh, Jean Valjean. And um, he he's very memorable. He's the perfect guy for the role. Actually, the director said that uh, if he didn't have Hugh Jackman in that main character role, he wouldn't have done the movie. Really? Yeah. I um, I wasn't going to go see it until I heard back from Andre about it. <laughs> and, you know, Andre is all macho. He <laughs> and Irma's, by the way, Irma's went to see it, too. Yes. And Irma's just loved it. He's like, he you did. gotta go he see did. it. Mm-hmm. And so since it's two macho men, you know, yes. the men back from the 30s have gone to see it, and they really liked it. I think, well, maybe I should go see it. This is the ultimate <laughs> macho story. I have to tell you, the two, like, the two biggest main themes that kind of 
stuck out for me. It really is a Christian movie on all levels, and it's not its not like telling you out front, but it's telling you through the story and through people's actions. Right on. Um, and it's also a story of patriotism. In what way? In what way? Uh, because it takes place during the French Revolution, um, or, uh, uh, you know, there are many little battles, and it's, you know, in the 1830s and thereabouts. Um, but these people who are just sick of being told what to do and they're willing to uh, sacrifice their lives and really? everything. Wow. Yeah. And, and you really see the inner workings of that. Yeah. I mean, there's there's I'm everything. Go there's like there's love in it. You know, there's some lighter moments that are very funny, um, you know, and yeah, there's deep stuff. And uh, this is for kids, too. Mm, not no. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. But <laughs> they'll see it in time. Right. Mm hmm. That's amazing. I heard it was about forgiveness and yes, and all that kind of forgiveness, stuff. dealing with sin, uh, showing people real love, struggling with the conditions of life. These people have really tough, like outer um, events that they're dealing with in life. Um, you know, grace, mercy, redemption, all those. You make me want to jump up and go see it today. I I felt and you know one interesting thing for me was you know I. I I know, you know how you're t- you were talking in the first hour about how television has degraded and, yeah. you know, movies along with it. Yeah. And I can't remember going to see a movie where I actually felt like I left the movie theater and I actually thought, you know what? This movie makes me want to be a better person. Really? I, I really actually thought that, you know? <laughs> and and that was pretty amazing. And it, it plan, it, it's planning theaters around the country. It is. Yeah. It's a big movie. As you see, there's a huge all star cast, Hugh Jackman, Anne Hathaway. Both, I thought they were the two that really stood out. Uh, there's Amanda Seyfried. Um, there is uh, Russell Crowe. Uh, and kind of a more a little more of a newcomer, Eddie Redmayne. But they all have really immense acting talent. So do the liberals or the children of Satan know mm-hmm. that this is a Christian movie before they go? Or are they surprised by it once they get there? Um that's a good question. Yeah. I think a lot of them kind of know that it is. A lot of them are, you know, quote unquote, cultured, went to university um, and probably had to read this novel at some point. Uh, and it's interesting you mentioned that because this movie actually with their um, strategy of marketing, the big company, right. they targeted evangelical Christians actually with marketing this movie. Really? Yes. But I, I think that a lot of people didn't realize uh, that it that it was as Christian as it was, but they don't quite hit you over the head with it because yes, there's a church in it and uh, but you know it's part of history. It takes place. This is how things were in the in the eighteen. I am definitely gonna go and see this movie, Kelly. You have totally <laughs> convinced me. Yeah, well, it's nice because, you know, I like to highlight movies that deal with values. Yeah. And, you know, oftentimes these days we haven't gotten to the point where the big studios take them on. So they're not all like pretty and this and that and so super polished. But in this case, they did have that bigger budget. It is in the mainstream. Les Miserables. Les Miserables. Mm-hmm. Les Miserables. Some people, so, some people just call it Les Mis. <laughs> yeah, uh, okay. Everyone will know what you're Les talking Mis. about. Excellent reporting, Kelly. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. I'm going to go see it. Excellent. And I'm going to try to see it this week. Awesome. I appreciate it. 888-77-JESSE. Back in a moment. Won't give me no rest. This might come out a little crazy.